common denominator. And I need all of you to stop what you're doing and listen. Let's talk about something important. Put that coffee down. I'm not here to waste your time. Everyone has access to the information. We just know how to analyze it better. Where else are you going to have this much ah! fun? You the man. You the man. Todd Father. Show me the money. See what I've been doing. Had to trip on my bag. Had to trip on my bag. Wow. Had to trip on my bag. Wow. Had to trip on my bag. Yeah. Had to trip on my bag. 60% of the time, it works every time. That doesn't make sense. Well, it's no trick to make a lot of money. All you want is to make a lot of money. What's going on, guys? Welcome back to another live episode of Learn Crypto. My name is Nick Hellman. I'm Todd Butterfield. We are here. Hopefully, you guys had a good weekend. It is Tuesday here in St. Louis. Obviously, we didn't go live yesterday. I was stuck at work for a while. Todd was doing some other things as well. It wasn't a ton to talk about. Bitcoin did have a little bit of a sell-off, a couple hundred, I think $200 move down. It is recouping some of those gains as we speak, now sitting at $6,334. We got a little bit to talk about. You know, is the real Bitcoin, not Bitcoin Cash, but XRP? Well, a Ripper executive, a Ripple executive sure thinks so, and we'll talk about whether he is right or wrong. We'll, this should be an interesting debate. We know a lot of people here are passionate for XRP, and a lot of people are passionate against XRP, so I'm excited to see what you guys think as well. We have China having some bullish news. I sent a tweet out about it, and it got retweeted of three, four, five hundred times. An article that really isn't being talked about much, but a ruling that was made by one of their government entities, which I think hints at the future of cryptocurrencies within China moving forward. Coinbase is at it once again. We got a couple things to talk about. What's the next coin going to be? Can I be right once again? We'll see. But really, this has to do with them just solidifying their place in the crypto ecosystem even further, raising even more money. Oh my gosh. How much will this, this conglomerate be worth? Right now, they're valuing it at $8 billion. And they just raised another series for $300 bucks. Pretty crazy. And then we got some Ethereum news as well. You know, they're making some donations to some people. And, uh, man, I think it's pretty interesting where they're deciding to send their money to. Of course, we'll have the Todd father here over here looking at the proprietary software to do some technical analysis on these crypto to see where we have our buys, where we have our sells, where we should be accumulating, etc. Nothing out of the ordinary. Obviously, we're happy to see everybody in here right now. Rocket366, Dennis, Chris Canine, Ryzen is in the building. Ryzen. Crypto Hunter is about to shoot us a buck, so we'll be getting some <laughs> of that deer sausage. We got Papa Naya Shelly in here. Uh, have not seen you in a while, my friend. Welcome back to the community. Elizabeth is in here changing your picture once again. I guess you're just changing that picture every time you go on vacation. It seems like you're always traveling uh, by looking at your Twitter. We got the Dolphin134 in here, and the list goes on and on. Make sure to smash that like, share, and subscribe button, guys. And yes, we are giving away the basic attention token bat from the last live show me and Todd did together. And then tonight will be a Zen Horizon giveaway. To enter that giveaway, smash that like button, smash that subscribe button, and leave a comment in the comment section below with your Horizon Zen wallet address. And that's it. It's as easy as that. Tomorrow, we will draw the winner of who will win one full Zen currently worth $15. What do you got going on over there, Todd? Not too much. Bitcoin not doing much here. Fell a couple hundred in setting, so uh, we've still got... Our various buy signals, really, we just kind of got scratches and everything, waiting for the next move. So the software, I did do an update earlier today around, what was it, 1 o'clock? So uh, we'll go over the software around 7. And until then, we'll let Nick do his thing. Sounds good. A lot of articles, but guys, it has been a long day, so bear with us. And this is the first show in a couple, couple days, so it might be a little rusty. But we're here doing our thing. So let's see what's going on over here at CoinMarketCap.com. Not a whole lot, even though we haven't been live in four days. Market cap at $203.3 billion, and the Bitcoin dominance still remains 54% or higher. Bitcoin, 
all of a sudden we are seeing some green here. Are we going to rally while we're live, Todd? Bitcoin is up 0.15% at 6334. Ethereum in the green trying to push back to that $200 mark, a level that is oh so important for Ethereum. And Ethereum is making some donations. Does that mean they're a little scared? Are they trying to create interoperability with some other projects? I think so. I think they see that they are starting to have ex outside competition from other protocols and they're looking to work with other research and development companies and other crypto projects to try to solidify their place here at the top of the cryptocurrencies ecosystem. Bitcoin cash up 1% at $421 and the list goes on and on. Everything is up about one penny. XRP has been like the most stable, stable coin I've seen the past few days, right in this range of 43 to 45 cents. Pretty Show crazy. Me Give me the bat. Give me the bat. <laughs> Shout out to Craig Nickham for the $10 donation. He was already on the screen. That is pretty awesome. He's there again. What up, Craig? Hopefully you have a chance to win that basic attention token from the last live show if you entered. If you have not entered already, you guys got about five minutes to get over there. Watch that video. Hit the like button. Hit the subscribe button and leave that bat wallet address. It was from two live shows ago, I believe. And the nice bat icon is right in the middle of the thumbnail. We've had a lot of comments on some of those videos. So. Uh, biggest winners for today is Denticoin up 21%. I would say congratulations to the holders, but this thing has been in free fall. This is one that I said I would not touch with a 10 for a poll. This is one that historically has been a massive pump and dump coin over and over and over again. So if you manage to somehow time the bottom yesterday by some miracle or some chance, congratulations on the 21% gainer. Veritasium is up another 21%. This one has been in the news a little bit recently with some of their development. We talked about this on last Thursday's show. We'll see if they can keep up the GERD work. Pundi X up 11%. No real major news, but they are starting to actually get their point of sale service into various events and storefronts. Their target market is Asia, the Asia markets, which I think they do have a first mover advantage on. You do know we've been talking about Square with traditional markets releasing a point of sale system to hopefully integrate Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies as well. They already released that patent, so that is going to become a reality. But Square's target market is North America and Europe at first, so I think Pundi X does have some room to grow. It's trying to break out. Pundi X has been stuck at, what was it, 21 to 23 sats forever. The buy walls and the sell walls are massive. But maybe this can be a legitimate breakout. We'll see what the software says. This is up to 26 sats. Nothing too crazy, but it just needs to get out of this trading range to really open up some headway above it. Chainlink up 7. WAN, when we were just talking about last week, up 6.72. And Basic Attention Token up 6%. This thing has held its gains and is rallying once again. I know that some people probably sold their positions or got stopped out, but this is one that we were looking for a 24 cent to either add to the bag or re-enter. We went ahead and said that again earlier today, and it is rallying off that nicely up to almost 25 cents here right now. So we'll see what the software has to say on that shortly as well. Yep. Do you want to take a look at a couple trading view charts, kind of give your overall perspective on uh, crypto right now as far as TA is concerned, and then I'll take some uh, news and fundamentals, and we'll see what's going on in the chat box until the so software kicks back on. I think real quick, I'm going to go over some stocks here because we're getting so much movement in the stock market. A lot of people are a little more interested. So uh, this is the SPY ETF. Uh, I had said in our week in review at wyckoffsmi.com, I thought we would bounce this week. So uh, Monday, we was much higher, had another big sell-off, uh, recovered a lot of it late in the day, and then today had a big day. So, uh, and today when we was up about 170, I reiterated that I thought we was gonna go higher. So I do think uh, we bounced some here. I'm not sure if that was, is a major low or a short-term low. Uh, but I do think we work higher <coughs> and then some things we were waiting on like on square square did come down today and give us the technometer down at the uh, actually you're showing now it's 4053 with the software on the on the stocks is updating during the day so during the day we did have that down to 38 level so uh, that would have gave us the buy signal that's shown on this chart because the buy and sells have worked very well on on Square. The only one that wasn't from the technometer was this one here, where I just thought we had gotten oversold, and I took that opportunity to put out a buy signal. So I did that for my pro traders. But now we've got actually a uh, real buy signal off the technometer. So I want to move that over. We had that this morning when it was just up a little bit. So we're going to put that there, and I guess I would think Square can uh, 
now work higher. And I know we had, uh, we talked about AMD on here. Let's go over that one real quick. Advanced Micro. Last time we was live, I think it was, is when it opened down. It was trading down at uh, that level there. So I think that is probably a uh, also a recovery point. You can see here we've just a hair lower than that. But I think that one's cheap and oversold. And then uh, we've been talking about gold and silver. The Barrick Gold looks like it's kind of had a 50% pullback off of the uh, markup that we had. 50% was here. I'm going to move that over. So uh, we just touched 50% today when we did the 1243 or so. So I really think then we came down. Again, here the technometer was overbought on the markup. I said, really, you don't want to sell that when you're in markup phase. You want to try to buy the uh, next pullback in the technometer. And we got that extremely well down here to the 38. So this close here would have been another point where you could have added on on ABX. So I really think probably we had the new highs on the gold and silver. So Leela 19,800 says you need to keep up on the news. Pundi X is going to Bitrex. Well, NPDX, you have the wrong ticker. So I'd, And on top of that, I do not think that is accurate information. I do not think the announcement has been made that NPX, NPXS will be added to Bitrex. That is not available. Uh, there's also rumors that maybe Pundi X will be added to Upbit. But really, all that doesn't really matter all that much because Pundi X is already available on Binance, which is currently the top exchange for volume. Obviously, you want to continue to see it branch out to others, but I don't think other exchange listings are going to cause a drastic pump, especially considering the massive buy and sell walls that are currently sitting on the order books over there. Um, so we'll see. I think you got your ticker wrong there, and I do not think that is factual information. And Ryzen, I'm not Pork Blaster 109. <laughs> I, th I guess you're talking about in the Rocket League. Maybe you're talking about my uh, Dash Lane, which is my uh, password software, because I don't know what the uh, – I'm not in the Rocket League, so can't help you there. I thought you were just doing some research for our other business venture. Well, <laughs> we are doing that. Yeah, Bitcoin down $100 doesn't mean we don't do a live stream. I was really busy yesterday. Nick's busy, so we're trying to get here as much as we can. But, you know, we've been here during the bear market, so we're not going nowhere. We're, we're trying to expand what we're doing here. So, and there's back to the Bitcoin chart. I've got the four buys really that the software gave us. I mean, I'm going to show here in about 15 minutes that the actual technometer on Bitcoin is the most oversold yesterday than it has been during this whole period I'm showing on the chart. So I still got a lean that we're under accumulation, but I did post that even this morning that uh, on the Twitter People were talking about what well, Peter Brandt talked about, a Wyckoff hinge. So I kind of want to go into the course and uh, kind of give a quote on that. Because the more compact the trading range is, the more likely the stock, coin, whatever, is under control by professionals. And the greater the possibility for the swift, explosive move upward following a spring or a shakeout. Watch for them. So what he's saying there is, you know, once, once you have a trading range, like we've had in Bitcoin. And let's go back to the daily then. Get rid of all the garbage. I mean, if we, and actually, let's go back to. I mean, there's our Wyckoff accumulation phase. So what they're saying is when you come down here, the composite operator is getting control of the situation. So they know what selling is coming in and they know, you know, they've accumulated what they want. But that still doesn't mean we can't have a shakeout because a shakeout's kind of, if you look at a lot of stock patterns over the years, et cetera, a big rally a lot of times is followed by a fake out in the other direction. So all that's saying is you could have a shakeout here or a spring and, uh, and then that would be really the end of it. After that, you'd have a quick markup phase. So we could have already had to spring back here like I labeled it. The spring could be what we just did, just uh, overnight, yesterday, or we still could have something more coming down here. But I, I still think that that if we get any type of more sell-off, it is just a spring, which will lead to uh, aggressive upside. So that's all. Sweet. Well, let's get into some news. No real maze of a massive questions over here in the comment box that I can see. So we'll hop over here. The first thing is, 
is XRP the real Bitcoin? Have we been wrong all the long time? We've just been looking at XRP as a trading coin. <laughs> but maybe maybe it is the index. Ah, well, well, at least that's like what one Ripple executive claims. Better, faster, cheaper, cheaper. Ripple executive claims XRP is Bitcoin 2. Dotto. During the interview, Johnson called Ripple Bitcoin 2.0. He frequently touts the benefits of Ripple over Bitcoin, recently commenting via Twitter on the hyper-sensational headlines about the emissions that Bitcoin mining induces. Quote, Please, how about reducing emissions by using a digital asset that doesn't require mining like XRP? That is the very reason that XRP is not... Bitcoin because it doesn't require mining. It was a 100% pre-mined. It wasn't a decentralized dis distribution. It doesn't have any way to verify and protect the network via proof of work or even proof of stake. Now, although XRP in recent times has finally, it's on, has its own use case and finally on the fringe of making a reality with the launch of XRapid, since XRapid does actually use the XRP token, before that it was all speculation. There was no use for XRP on XCurrent or their other platforms. Now that XRapid is becoming a reality, they are getting some clients over there. Hopefully, that means they'll be using the XRP token. Now, this is still a proven, unproven metric for token economics and whether or not that can provide velocity to the network, which will, in turn, be price appreciation of that network and the XRP token, only because we really see it as a lot of wash trading. If I use XRP as a settlement solution, as soon as Todd over in Japan gets it. He's going to immediately sell XRP back to the market. Does that really cr create price appreciation? Supply and demand? Velocity of the network? We'll just have to wait and see. But I do not believe that Bitcoin or XRP, they're not even in the same sector, guys, nor should they even be mentioned in the same sentence. XRP has its own use case. It has its own vision, but it is not Bitcoin. Bitcoin was created to be a decentralized peer-to-peer -peer network, transactional currency that can be used by anyone at any time. Also on top of that, it has proof of work to verify the blockchain, cre create immutability, and provide security, of which XRP is very questionable at that. We'll have to wait and see. There are two very different things, and I don't think that this was a well-written article. I don't think that this interview that this guy put on really leads me to believe that he even knows too much about blockchain technology and why Bitcoin was created or why Bitcoin is born to really give the power back to the people and avoid the very people that XRP and Ripple are giving the power back to via the institutions, via the centralized banks, via the government. Bitcoin is its own entity separate from all of those entities in which XRP is trying to cooperate with. Will XRP rally in price? I think yes, couple of reasons. The community is very strong. We'll see how they react. Very little downward pressure. A lot of people in XRP really believe in it, so they're only going to be buying and FOMOing. The only downward pressure is the co-founder himself, Jeb McCaleb, is still trying to sell his 7 billion XRP, and he's doing it in the most rude way possible, and that is he said he's doing it on the open market. He only can sell a certain percentage based on the trading volume for the day, but nonetheless, he is dumping it each and every day. And then number two, XRP with the release of XRapid finally has a use case, and I think this will be good. They're going to they're going to continue to create more partnerships uh, more use cases, and you're just going to start seeing more transactions on the network, which I think will lead to hype and price appreciation as well. But once again, it is not the real Bitcoin, and I think that uh, for being a Ripple executive, he really misrepresented XRP and Ripple as a whole altogether. I'm sure a ton of people over here in the chat box talking about who knows. A lot All of people right. are selling Bitcoin for altcoins. Power to achieve, says... Dragon Chain is definitely moving on up here. Dragon is making a nice move here. So, yep. And on the biggest green volume uh, in a few months here. So nice move there. It's kind of doing its thing. A lot, a lot of these altcoins are really starting to have a rounded bottom, which could be solid for the future. Oh, you know, well. if we really hit a bottom, they're starting to round out. We'll see what happens, see if we start getting some movement, especially if we start seeing s some nice movement out of the large caps, I would be more safe and secure in the profits that the alts are making currently. Uh, but we'll just see how that plays out. As Taj says, Nick, you will have XRP nightmares tonight. Watch out. Hey, you guys already know I, I bought XRP at 41 cents because you guys made me. And then I bought more at 45 cents um, when the Coinbase news came out that they had regulatory approval to be a custodian for the XRP token. I think, number one, that means that more institutions, because now they're going to have access 
via custodian on Coinbase will get involved. And number two, that there's a high probability that XRP could be listed on the Coinbase Pro or Coinbase.com because of that regulatory approval, which I think is one thing that they were kind of holding back on. Either they were afraid it was a security or they were afraid since maybe somebody already owned it, that there may have been a conflict of interest, whether that was Brian Armstrong or somebody else within the organization. But obviously that didn't seem to be a problem with the custodian uh, approval. You got some charts here. I mean, still a lot of these charts are looking good. So the software has picked a few lows in some of them, and I think it's kept everyone long. So, uh, you know, if Bitcoin does the same thing, it's going to ignite everything here, I think. But otherwise, uh, some of these coins look good. And I know the software went from uh, really uh, overbought XRP to a buy. So I think XRP will still dig in at these levels. BAT looks good, as Nick mentioned, came down to 24, which is previous support. So I think that one looks good here. And Rocket three six six says Hitman is all in on XRP. Nah, not quite. I don't. It's still probably one of the smaller portfolio holdings. Probably I don't even know, like top fifteen. Probably. I'm really looking for a flip play. Obviously, you guys made me buy it at the forty one cents. The software was saying that was a good buy, and then we went on here live, and I bought it at forty five cents as that Coinbase news came out, hoping for a rally, hoping that we move higher here, let some FOMO ensue, and hopefully get a nice double up on XRP, put it back to Bitcoin, and then reevaluate from there. All right, the big news in my opinion, you know, a lot of people haven't been talking about it. A lot of people did retweet this when I tweeted this, like 300, 400 people retweeted or something crazy. But China's merchants are legally allowed to accept Bitcoin and crypto. And some people said, well, it's been legal over there. Well, this isn't talking about just individuals, but this is talking about businesses and via point of sale services. This might also be why PundiX is rallying a little bit. PundiX target market is the Asian market. And this is a little bit of great news from the Chinese government. Can they flip-flop again? Possibly. But we've been saying since day one, all the FUD around China and crypto, they have done this in traditional markets with Twitter creating WeChat, with Facebook creating WeChat, with uh, other with uh, Amazon then creating Alibaba. They do this all the time. They FUD the market. They, they ban, a blanket ban on certain regulation until they can build up their own infrastructure and not be left behind. Then they're like, oh, actually, guys, this is really great technology. Come over to Alibaba and buy your, buy your toothbrush and we'll have it shipped to you in two days. I mean, they do this all the time. So regardless, China is here to stay. They're going to be a big crypto advocate. This is also going to be a way for them to leverage uh, power over the United States via not maybe not having to use USD anymore. You obviously know they're trying to get their Chinese yen stronger and they've been hoarding gold over there. That's a proven fact. And now they're probably hoarding cryptocurrencies, doing whatever they can to solidify themselves for the next wave of uh, power infrastructure globally as, US, as the United States has been a little lagging on cryptocurrency. So if this does become a digitized world and a digitized monetary system, I think United States, unless they really pick it up, is going to be a leg behind some of these other countries, including China, uh, South Korea, Malta, etc. So the Shizen Court of International Arbitration officially recognized Bitcoin as property, allowing individuals and businesses to own and transfer Bitcoin without being in conflict with existing financial regulations. In essence, Wu explained that due to the decentralized nature of Bitcoin that provides financial freedom and economic value to the owner, the asset can be recognized as a property. As much, the court emphasized that regardless of legality of Bitcoin and other major cryptocurrencies, the circulation and payment of Bitcoin is not illegal. That means merchants can freely accept cryptocurrencies as a payment method without breaking the current local law. Earlier this month, China's oldest technology publication, Beijing SciTech Report, as a respected media company in the country, released its plans to accept Bitcoin for its yearly subscription to promote the usage of the blockchain and practical use cases of the dominant cryptocurrency. In consideration of China's optimistic stance towards blockchain technology and positive comments regarding the sector made by government agencies, it has become more apparent that the government placed a blanket ban on cryptocurrency trading to prevent the devaluation of the Chinese yuan and to limit speculation in the market. But overall, the government remains open to crypto and the usage of blockchain to improve existing infrastructures and problems pertaining to software and data settlement. If China really pushes to start having their merchants start accepting cryptocurrencies, and whether that's even the cryptocurrency that has been 
born and raised in China, maybe a Neo, whatever it may be. There's also obviously others that the government is kind of getting behind. VET is being one of those as well. I think that is really bullish. You know, we saw how the markets during the bull market reacted when China would put out FUD. They dumped. Obviously, people are like, but why is Bitcoin selling then and not rallying? During a bear market, Bitcoin is not going to rally. Good news does not create much in the actual charts. What it does is add another puzzle piece to the macro fundamental infrastructure that is being built right under your nose. We already see it with traditional markets. We've talked about it with BAC, Iris X, TD Ameritrade, etc. But now we got to see it from a global perspective and from a country's perspective. We see Malta going all in on blockchain and cryptocurrencies. We see South Korea going all in on blockchain and cryptocurrencies. Now it appears that China is finally lifting their foot from the throat of cryptocurrencies and allowing, making a ruling that is property, meaning anybody, any individual, any store, any online commerce website can now freely accept and transact using Bitcoin and cryptocurrency. Yet another micro fundamental that is for the bullish side, guys. Once this thing turns around, all these pieces are going to come together and we are going to be off to the races. I think as we start to see better general user interfaces and more utilization of these networks, mass adoption will, assume, will ensue shortly after that as well. Well, we got 33 likes, no uh, thumbs down. Unbelievable. The haters That's are rare. Probably had, haters probably had to go out and get a job probably. You're going to... Thank God no You're going to ruin it. I had to go out and get a job. I ain't got time to sit around. Hilton Stone. Doing the usual. Throwing money around. TRAC. I'll have to look at that one. Show me the money. All Thanks. right, Hilton Stone, shout out to you for the $20 Super Chat. Smash the likes, everyone. Nick and Todd, what's your view on projects like Veritasium? Also, Todd, can you please have a look at Oregon, Origin Trail, <laughs> T-R-A-C. I don't know if that's in the software or not, but you'll have to take a look at that. I don't know. I mean, I've looked at Veritasium here and there, but I really haven't done a full in-depth look at it. I'm going to write that down for you, Hilton Stone, and since you did pay $20, I will either do a quick review or summary of it tomorrow during the live show, or I'm actually going to do a full dedicated recorded review for that cryptocurrency. Really appreciate the super chat, my friend. And there you go. I think I might do a whole video for you, Hilton Stone, as you have been uh, a repeat super chatter. Your name always seems to be down here at the bottom. You always seem to be adding some more coins to our tip jar there. So I think you're going to get your own personal video. So stay tuned for a full review and fundamental overview a Veritasium very shortly, guys. And that reminds me, shout out to Chris Lamousin, who purchased the course last night. Welcome to the uh, Wyckoff community. Go through the course. If you have any questions, all you got to do is click the teacher button and uh, throw me a uh, question, or if you got problems, whatever, hit me up. We're here to help. And also, I was going to say, what's our, on YouTube, we're at 5,780. Is that right, Nick? Something like that? Uh, what are we up to now, guys? 5,780. It's refreshing, so cool. I don't know. I mean... 5,783 I subscribers. I mean, we've been getting subscribers pretty quick. I mean, we've had another, I don't know what, a quick 400 or something like in the last 10 days or so. So uh, I think what we're going to do to get everybody maybe share more videos, get us more subscribers, because that's what it's about in this bear market building this community up so we're going to give away a free course when we uh get through six thousand. if we can do that by what sunday night this well, week or something show them where it is that there go to the store tab show them where it is up here top left store tab go to cryptocurrencies and wyckoff and uh, it'll give you the details also show you a free lesson and also show you uh all the lesson excerpts and a few things about wyckoff etc why you'd want to buy the course so or we're going to give one away. So there's a list of what's in the course. And the software, as I said maybe earlier today on the first broadcast, is uh, they're saying they upload to the new server at Amazon. They're testing it tonight, tomorrow. And then I'm going to say, without any issues, we'll be ready to offer it out to subscribers here soon. So if you purchase the course, you're going to be able to get the software for half off monthly. Or you're just going to watch me talk about it on hopefully kind of some live broadcast in the morning. And then obviously here. 
Well, there you go, guys. If we get to 6,000 subscribers, that's only 217 by the end of the week. Todd said he will give away one free cryptocurrency and Wyckoff trading course from LearnCrypto.io. Over 950 current students and over 25 lessons to really teach you how to enter and exit this market. That is pretty exciting. So make sure you do your part. Share some things on Twitter. Share the videos right now, whether it's a live video, whether maybe it's your favorite interview with a, a coin project you really like. Tag those people. Let them know about the channel, and we'll see what's up. Make sure to go to our YouTube homepage as we have a ton of reviews, interviews, crypto technical analysis, ton of recorded videos, and I'm sure you'll find some new information over there you didn't even know we had posted. Share that. Let's get to 6,000 subscribers. Let's get one of you a free cryptocurrency and trading course. And Kanan is in here from Vercoin reminding everybody that, yes, if you are buying the cryptocurrency course, we do accept Vertcoin as payment, as well as US dollars, Bitcoin, Ethereum, Litecoin, and Dash. Those are your options to pay if you do are not a winner of our cryptocurrency trading course. Another also, make sure to smash that like, share, and subscribe button because this is a Horizon Zen giveaway show. I see a lot of people getting in here a little late, so I want to make sure that to all of you watching, you can win free coins here at Learn Crypto almost every single show. Simply leave a comment in the comment section below when this video is posted and leave your Zen wallet address and you, that's it. You have a chance to win some free money. One full Zen for this show worth $15. What were you about to say, Todd? Yazan, thanks for the subscribe. And then I'm ready to show some uh, software here. We're back up and running. Do it. So uh, we've got yes, on yesterday's sell-off, we came down to a technometer reading actually uh, at 35.31. That's as oversold as we've had here for the last few months. So once again, OP is hitting new lows. Price is still trying to hold in here. So I've still got to be somewhat enthused by that. I've showed a lot of charts where that resolves to the upside. I'm going to show XRP US DT first. You can see here we had a actual sell signal up here on the 23rd on XRP, but a quick buy right back a week later. So you could have been cute and sold 0.465, maybe got it back 0.445. Not going to give those exact numbers, but we're back to uh, a buy. And then you've got the OP. Actually, I'd have, if I went to the five minute, probably hit a new low uh, yesterday or today. These are daily closes, but right down there to, to new lows. So still selling coming in and XRP holding in, which I still think is definitely friendly. Let's look at XRP USD. See if there's anything much different. I don't think there really is. Uh, technometers below neutral, so still allows for more upside. The OP, the volume is not coming in quite as heavy on USD. So still looks good there, I think. XRP BTC. It looks like uh, if you're noticing, the OP force and tech is loading faster, so maybe they went over to the new server because that should be what happens once because all this data is going to be saved. We're not going to go fishing for it. And their technometer is a little bit above neutral. And uh, the OP has been a little more in lockstep. So I think XRP is still good. We got BAT, USDT. <clears throat> breaking Actually, news, want... breaking news, breaking news oh real goodness. quick. What happened? Goldman Sachs. Investment banking giant Goldman Sachs has quietly begun signing up a limited number of customers for its yet-to-launch Bitcoin trading product. Add that to the micro macro fundamentals. Another giant trying to harness and build an infrastructure so they can profit off the next rally in cryptocurrencies. I think this leads to what Todd has been saying in the chart, where it appears that we're seeing increased selling volume, but yet the Bitcoin price continues to hold. This means the retail investors are selling, while the composite maker is accumulating. Here's another re another recent news article that uh, leads us to that belief, and I'm going to stick to that, guys, because Goldman Sachs, another big name, another name that we have not heard from in a while, and now apparently a couple customers have opened up anonymously and said, hey, I've actually been signed up for a beta version of their yet-to-launch Bitcoin trading product that is coming next year in 2019. So there you go. Go ahead, Todd. Sorry to interrupt. I thought that was pretty big. Stefano wants to know if we think Bitcoin is really bottomed out. I mean, I think it's under accumulation. As I talked when we 
first came on. I mean, that doesn't mean that uh, we can't go down for a spring or something to shake out the last few people. But I still think we've been under accumulation. So, And yes, I've heard about Bitcoin Ben. I mean, uh, watched him a couple times. I really think, is he? I think he's from St. Louis. I think he's a trucker. And I think he likes to have a few cocktails, maybe. So He likes Litecoin. Oh, and he likes Litecoin. I think he was extremely bullish, you know, late last year, like looking for much higher. So I presume he's probably still extremely bullish. Bitcoin Ben has some connections. Yeah, I don't know about that one. So we got uh, Bat USD in front of us. Uh, I'd mentioned on uh, Twitter and some private messages, I thought 24 was support. That's back here at what was really a triangle, which if you throw in a little bit of Elliott Way, which I do once in a while, then 24 would have been some support. And then actually uh, our technometer came down here and stayed friendly throughout all this. So I really think the 24 level is another buy point on Bat. And I think that one will continue higher. Obviously, if any news of Coinbase, that one probably should shoot up again pretty well. So, uh, yeah, the OP Force Tech's loading fast, so I think the developers are finally getting their shit together. So, technometer's neutral on BAT BTC, so not much else to say there. I think somebody's going to ask about Poly BTC, because that's one we'd kind of, if Dustin is in here. We've had uh, the buy signal there on Poly BTC. We keep working higher. Technometer is a little bit below neutral. Ought to stay good there. Poly USD. I'm about to reload that one. And then what? Somebody mentioned Fun. Let's do Fun BTC first. Ryzen says 12 a.m. where he's at, and Isaac is up insisting that he watches the Todd Father. <laughs> Quote, no, Daddy, I'm not, I'll go to bed after the Todd Father is finished. Thanks, Todd. That's nah, funny. That's awesome. That's why we try to keep things. Uh, obviously, we're all here to make money. We're all here to stack our bags. We're all here to have a few laughs. We try to keep things pretty PG around here, as I know that some kids do watch. We really want to make this uh, an attractive channel to get, acquire knowledge for everybody from beginners to intermediates to advanced individuals while maintaining some fun but you know we're here we work all day we got a lot of other things we try to come on here live for you guys for the community come on here for an hour hour and a half crank out as much fundamentals as much news as much charts as we can within that short time frame stack our bags make some great trades and have a few laughs i'm trying to bring up some i think the developers might be in as we speak so yeah, you need to take it over and let me, uh, you got something to give away, right? Yeah, we're going to go ahead and give away the basic attention token that we owe you from this last live show right here. This show did have 1.3K views almost and 189 comments, it looks like. Somebody really wants that basic attention token. We're also going to talk about that here in a second after I give this away and why I think it may be going higher. Let's go ahead and do this. Pop this over on our random comment picker. No funny business around here. What up, Jay Stevens? Appreciate the kind words. 163 unique commenters. You have a 1 in 163 chance of winning some basic attention token. Shout out to Armin for betting me 10,000 bat that it was going to be listed to on Coinbase. When I persisted and said no, it was just going to be an integration of USDC, he took the bet. And guess what? The man stuck to his word, sending me 10,000 basic attention tokens the very next morning, and you can do the math on that. That's no small bet. A lot of people in this crypto ecosystem, in this Twitter ecosystem, would have simply blocked me and disappeared, but he stuck to his word, and we went ahead and gave him a shout-out during that live show because I was quite surprised to wake up the next morning and seeing that in my wallet. So here we go. Who's the winner going to be? Giving away some of those coins back to you guys, back to the community. Gamer Dude. Great stuff, guys, as always. Shout-out to Gamer Dude. If you're watching right now, my friend, you'll be seeing some more basic attention tokens going into your wallet address either tonight or tomorrow. And that's it, guys. No no funny business, no games. You don't got to pay to play. All we ask is that you simply be active community members, enjoy our content, share our content, ask us questions in our live shows, and leave a comment in the comment section below with your horizon 
Zen wallet address to be entered for tonight's giveaway. Z-E-N wallet address. Leave that comment down there. And let's give away some Zen tomorrow, my friends. All right, so what's going on? You know, a lot of people are saying, oh, crypto's dead. Bitcoin's dead. Why are you buying that? Sell off. And a lot of retail investors are doing that. According to our software, the selling pressure continues to mount, but the price is holding. So all these people are getting shaken out, hoping for lower prices. Like we said on Thursday, I don't care about $200 moves. I don't care if we go back to the bottom, which was 5,800. I am accumulating in dollar cost averaging at these levels. Kanan said it earlier. Everybody was begging to be able to buy Bitcoin at 10K. Now we're sitting around $6,000. We've continued to be sitting around these levels. Now is when it should be accumulating. Coinbase and Bittrex says, hold all my beer because Coinbase once again is raising more money. Bittrex you know, says, hey, I know our, our United States exchange is all great and grand, but they just announced that they're releasing Bittrex International, another separate exchange that will be housed in Malta, as we know, is a very crypto-friendly uh, country right now. So Bittrex is expanding and Coinbase is expanding. Cryptos are not dead, my friends. We are just beginning. Coinbase raises a Series E, not A, not B, C, D, or D, Series E round of financing to accelerate the adoption of cryptocurrencies. At Coinbase, we believe that cryptocurrencies and the technologies that power them represent a breakthrough in computer science that will change both the internet and the global financial system for the better. We see tremendous promise in crypto to build the next great phase of the internet, often referred to as Web 3.0, which has the power to put control back in the hands of consumers, unleash a new era of innovation, and offer greater access to economic opportunities to more people around the world. Doesn't sound like crypto is dead to me. Today, we are pleased to announce that Coinbase will add an additional $300, no, $300 million of investment at a valuation of over $8 billion dollars to accelerate the adoption of cryptocurrencies and digital assets. This has nothing to do with the IPO that probably is going to happen that allows Coinbase to go public, but just a whole separate, you know, we we'll just need another series, another 300 million measly dollars. That's no big deal. But they're focusing on, here is where I think the tip is to what will be the next asset on Coinbase. This $300 million raise is focusing on the adoption and utilization of cryptocurrency and blockchain technology. Focusing on global expansion, building the infrastructure between fiat and crypto in regulated markets around the world, and utility applications for cryptocurrencies. Which cryptocurrency has a finite use case, really solves a real world, real world problem, and has a great general user interface? It's already on the Coinbase shortlist now. I mentioned it six months ago in my prediction video. That is basic attention token. Now, although rumors were running rampant last week and I was saying, no, 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 pump the brakes. They're just adding a stablecoin USDC to Coinbase Pro and Coinbase Prime, which is what happened. I think with these subtle hints there to what the next direction is for Coinbase, as far as focusing on utilization, Brave Browser, general user interface is great. Your grandma could download that just like they download uh, Google Chrome or or Internet Explorer, and then basic attention token, since it is a utility token that provides utilization on its network by the via the application in the Brave browser for everybody to use. I think that basic attention token, with this little hint, has solidified its space as being the next crypto on Coinbase. You also know I was targeting XLM, I was targeting ADA, and I was targeting basic attention token, but I think with these hints, with the rumors, with everything going on, I do believe it probably will be basic attention token. The software was giving us a buy reading around 24 cents on the base on the bat token. So we, technically, we should see higher prices. And if Coinbase announces an integration of the basic attention token, we do know we will see a pretty solid rally in which we can try to swing trade or hodl moving into the next bull run. What's going on over there? Todd, is the software working at all? Yeah, I was just looking at a couple of people have mentioned a few. We got areas, Elizabeth so. over here shouting out all the dragon emojis. Yeah, dragon has had a decent a decent day and has low-key rallied pretty well off its low. Dragon is one that I think is doing a lot of solid development behind the scenes, continuing to capture partnerships, capture utilization, and it does have a pretty strong community. 
I think Dragon is going to be one that you're probably not going to do too bad with having it in your portfolio. Just give me a second here. I was marking up a couple charts. Steven Dela Cruz says, weak noob hands getting shaken out. Well, they call it a shakeout in uh, Wyckoff terms for a reason, and that is because, yes, if you are not reading the chart properly, if you're not uh, aware of the Wyckoff elements going into play, you're going to sell your bag at the ultimate wrong time or find yourself with a stop and get stopped out right before the rally. Then a lot of bearers are like, well, you don't need to buy now because you'll have many chances to buy on the way up. So I don't know how that works all the time, but that'll be interesting. You don't need to buy now because you can buy later when you know it's going up. Like people know for sure or something. I don't know. How about, uh, let me see here. Maverick Gold says, what do you think about Think of USX that was in the Linda Coin airdrop today. I've not really looked into that uh, that project as of yet, and I don't even think USX is on Coin Market Cap either. So I have to do a little more digging. Hey, but I will say about free coins. Free coins are free coins. I know that Linda Coin. If you had Linda Coin over on mynodepool.com, you also received 1,000 free uh, Volcano token or whatever it is. Haven't even looked too much into that project either. Really doesn't interest you that interest me that much. But it does have proof of stake, and I'm just letting the 1,000 coins sit over there and letting them stake. I've got a chart on fun USD someone mentioned, and I could show that. Not much to talk about. We had a buy, a sell, a buy. That's worked a little bit. So we're on a buy here coming off this last oversold technometer, and we're sitting here really at neutral. So if you want to get into trading mode, probably... Uh, I have a trade fund a little bit. I think the risk is high on that one, but and that's really about all I've got at the moment. Someone wants to know if you can look at the ZEC chart or the XLM chart if possible. XLM, I know we can look at that one. I mean, there is the... Uh, XLM, just a one month. We had a buy down at the lows, and then we really had another buy up here higher. And then we really came back. We're a little deeper than 50%, maybe 61% pullback. So a little deeper here, but you know, obviously this here is Bitcoin applying some pressure. So, and you've got the OP here continuing to make new lows while price still holds. So I still think XLM's just gearing up for I run to the upside. Let's look at XLM USD, see if anything's any different. Now see here, you had the sell up here at the top, then you had a buy at the bottom, you had a sell here, and then really just went to a buy. This is XLM USD, so you went to a buy here before the Bitcoin break. So I think XLM is still good. And can you look at the ZEC chart? ZEC USDT. That's coming up quick. I mean, the low end technometer is 25, the high end is 54, so just a little violent, but really would have had a sell up here at the uh, 122 area and then just came down to a buy really. Uh, really today as we speak. So ZEC, USDT, a buy right here. And going along with ZEC, there is also some positive news. So the technometer is saying to buy it. And uh, ZEC did just do an upgrade. ZEC couldn't let XMR have all the efficiency glory in the privacy crypto sector. Zcash has completed a network upgrade dubbed Sapling. Essentially what this does is now all their shielded, shielded transactions or their private transactions are 100 times lighter and six times faster. Show now, me do, the money. Do remember that ZEC was on the Coinbase shortlist. Do also remember that after ZRX had their version 2 upgrade, that's when it finally got listed on Coinbase. So if the next coin that Coinbase was waiting to list happens to be Zcash, they did just happen to finish an upgrade which may help them integrate into their system or at least become more efficient. But I do not know if that is the case only because 
Coinbase probably is not going to be allowing private transactions, and the Sapling upgrade really only directly affected all private transactions on their network, uh, increasing the scalability of those private transactions as they continue to try to solidify their space in the privacy sector. Zcash wants to be known for privacy, but as of now, only 5% of their transactions on their network actually use the privacy technology. That is why if you are looking for something truly private, I recommend XMR as it is not an option optionality. Every transaction is private on XMR. If I want to do a shielded transaction to somebody who doesn't do a shielded transaction, well, there is a weak link in the chain and my, an my anonymity may only become pseudo-anonymous as my cryptocurrency wall wallet address might be able to be backtracked to me via these weak links within the blockchain and the privacy of that blockchain more particularly. Still good news for Zcash, still a massive upgrade. Maybe the reason that only 5% of the transactions use privacy features was the fact that, I mean, they were super heavy. I mean, 100 times lighter and six times faster. Those are pretty good upgrades there for Zcash. Uh, you guys do know back in the day, I used to mine Zcash due to profitability, but I kind of just sold it and swapped it out for XMR and other privacy coins. I really don't hold much Zcash at this point. But nonetheless, this is some good news for the development side. The charting software is saying to be buying Zcash down here. And it kind of gets forgotten, but Zcash was added to Gemini or is added to Gemini and is also on the Coinbase shortlist as well. So we'll see what happens moving forward for Zcash. Shout out to Dustin Nelson for the $5 super chat. What does the chart technometer say about Poly BTC? Thanks, you guys are awesome. Well, Dustin, you probably could have saved $5 if you would have tuned in a little earlier. Todd knew you were coming and looked at the Poly chart. Hopefully, he can pull it up <laughs> once again. But we really appreciate the $5 super chat. That keeps the lights on here, here in the studio. You know, there is some expenses that go along with this, as well as helps... Uh, Helps to swallow the time and effort we put in here for you guys and for the community. You know, we really enjoy doing this. But well, thanks once again. What is the chart saying over there, Todd? I'm mean, still showing higher on Poly BTC. Technometer is 42 on the Poly BTC. And then I wanted to go to uh, Poly USD. So I'm getting a I think I'm getting bad data on Poly USD. So Poly BTC. I got to research that one, but still we're on a buy from here, and then uh, we never got to sell. We're still setting around 42. So and then you got the OP coming down, still pretty hard. So Awful. I would think that one can hold in and still work higher. There you go. Uh, we call that a bullish divergence when the OP is coming down, but the price is holding or going up, right? Yeah, I mean, you can, you know, if you're really bearish, you can say this rally here had no volume because the OP didn't go to a new high, which would make this a little bit suspect. So that's why I think we could have an ABC down here. But the technometer is still holding, uh, you know, pretty oversold. So I think probably, you know, it could have a pullback, maybe take out this low here of uh, a few days ago bar, kind of like Matt just did. But I, I think that one still looks good coming off some good buy signals. So sweet, sweet, sweet. That is all I got. Thanks for everybody tuning in here. I do have one more quick thing. I'm not going to bore you with the whole entire article, but I did mention that Ethereum made a big donation. And who did they donate to? The Ethereum Foundation donated to Ethereum Classic Cooperative 15,000 ETC, currently worth about $150,000 to solidify their peace bridge moving forward, working to allow both the Ethereum Classic and Ethereum blockchain to work interoperably together and using IOHK as their research and development group. What is so funny about this and ironic is, you guys may know this, may not, who co-founded Ethereum? That was Charles Hoskinson and Vitalik Buterin. Charles Hoskinson actually left Ethereum due to the DAO hack and how Vitalik wanted to move forward with the Ethereum blockchain, erasing the lost coins and changing the code. Charles Hoskinson wanted to stick with the true term that code is law and that blockchain should be immutable because that is what it is. Stayed with Ethereum Classic, put one million of his own dollars into Ethereum Classic and 18 months of development time to build Ethereum Classic where it is today. Charles Hoskinson also is the founder of IOHK 
And now everything comes back in cycles, my friends. Ethereum Foundation now says, hey, you guys might be onto something over there at Ethereum Classic, and we want to be part of it. We need the Ethereum and the Ethereum Classic blockchains to be interoperable, and we want to make a large donation to do some more research and development with some of these recent projects. So I think Charles Hoskinson kind of gets the last laugh there, and we'll see what happens with the interactions with Charles and with Vitalik moving forward. As we do know, they, but, they do respect each other, but have butted heads with each other in the past. Nonetheless, I think Ethereum is starting to see that there is some sector competition in the protocol level. They're seeing some pressures from EOS, from NEO, from Ethereum Classic, and others. And I think this is their way of, sh of sticking out their hand, trying to create a mutually beneficial partnership to solidify their ranks in the cryptocurrency ecosystem. And I think this says a lot about the future of Ethereum Classic and why I think that it is a strong buy at these levels. Strong uh, mining at these levels as well. The profitability is very high. So if you're mining, I would be mining Ethereum Classic. And don't forget, guys, Ethereum Classic is on Coinbase now. So when the next bull run starts, hopefully sooner than later, new retail investors get involved, new institutional investors get involved. They will have access to Ethereum Classic. Not to mention Ethereum Classic is on grayscale as well, an institutional, traditional investment product. I think it's a bright future for Ethereum Classic. I don't think you should miss out on it. Ethereum obviously is showing some uh, some solid price action here around $200. I think that is a very important level, and I think there's some gains to be had there. But looking at the market capitalization, I think Ethereum Classic might be the better choice for a risk to reward. I think there is a high upside there. I think the fact that they're donating $150,000 to the Ethereum Classic Cooperative shows a positive and bright future for Ethereum Classic. And Ethereum ETC Cooperative is only one of five dev teams working with the Ethereum Classic blockchain. I think we're going to see some nice utilization, some nice products, and hopefully some mass adoption for that protocol platform. Looks like YouTube's got us back on their logarithm. We've got quite a few people showed up. So I'm going to go back to the Bitcoin chart three month just to show what we got going on here with the software pulling volume from 96 exchanges. So the OP is the intraday volume. You can see here continuing to hit new lows even into today. And you still got basically higher lows here going across four times here. And you've got a technometer reading on USDT really, uh, the lowest we've been throughout this whole trading range. So again, sell volume coming in, making that technometer oversold, and we keep doing it at higher levels. Then you got Bitcoin USD, three month chart. It's got the actual buys here marked, and the technometer came in at oversold readings at those buy points. Those are buys that I really gave on Twitter, et cetera. And, uh, you know, again, the technometer, 50 sell, 38 buy. You don't want to just follow that randomly. You need to bring in some more technical analysis and a study. But, uh, you know, really we had a buy then. Uh, yesterday we got a mark on the sell-off down here to 63.45 or so. So we're going to add one more there. So, again, just keep getting buy signals. We're not really getting any sells. I mean, you, you had a 50.44 back here. And uh, that only got you the quick, uh, you know, that was that quick move off of ETFs. That was a 250 point move and then right back to new highs. So that one didn't, didn't help out. Here we had a 49. And downtrends, I mean, you know, you'd want to sell probably a 48, 49. So you could have had a sell here. Again, uh, didn't get you much. You could have had a sell here. If you sold here, you got caught up in the tether scare. If he's at the wrong exchange, that could have hurt. But uh, still at new lows in the OP, technometers oversold. I've shown a ton of charts here on the alts. That's, that's led to higher prices. I've shown some stock charts. That's, that's led to higher prices. So the risk reward is still being long here, I think. And if we're under accumulation longer term, then uh, we could have that spring here. And, uh, and then I think aggressively go to the upside. So that's where we're at. Perfect. Somebody's saying, what is going on with NEO lately? NEO has taken a hit just like every other coin. I think NEO's chart looks a little more dramatic, but only because they did have a bigger uh, little rally there uh, during the bear market due to the ONT airdrop. A lot of people kind of forget about ontology, but uh, that was a big hype event and really pumped the NEO price, which I think makes their chart look a little more dramatic as far as falling off. But you have to keep that in mind. That's what was going on. That was kind of what was propelling the price higher during the bear market. NEO is still doing their thing. They're getting more. They just released a couple of ICOs or coins that uh, 
uh, are building on their blockchain. They still have Trinity as a sidechain scaling solution if and when that is needed with the next bull run and more users to get on board, obviously. And uh, they're doing a ton of hackathons globally to try to uh, kind of have like an incubator program to try to weed out some of the poop projects and find some solid projects which they're going to incentivize to build on NEO. Also, if you're a NEO holder in the Neon Wallet, the uh, Binance or KuCoin, you do receive a monthly payout of gas as a dividend payout payment. So that is nice as well. So I think, yeah, obviously NEO price has been terrible. But if you look at all the other charts, its percentage from the highs is in line with a lot of the other altcoins. And you did uh, have a little relief in the bear market with the ONT airdrop rally. I know a lot of us here on the channel did capture uh, the ONT airdrop. ONT also pays out dividends, which is nice. We've been collecting those. And ONT did rally all the way up to $10, joining the $1 billion club for a little while. And I know some of us uh, tried to swing trade and scalp trade that as well. And once you throw it over to me, we'll show the NEO chart then, because that's how we do it. NEO USD, you've got OP continuing to hit new lows. You had a technometer reading down here, finally at, an, at a buy, and you had one, uh, hold on a second, then you had one uh, three days ago and uh, a few weeks back. So we've got a buy somewhat around 1560 and 16 and a quarter. So got some losses on those two. And then you got NEO USDT. I think the chart's about the same thing. Actually, you had a buy yesterday, I believe. So, uh, which would have gave you a much better entry point. Yeah, there we are. So, uh, really a buy yesterday at these prices. So, uh, NEO USDT, and you can see volume continuing to hit new lows. Coming into uh, 30 minutes ago, we hit a new low. So, so again, oversold it looks like. One more NEO BTC. Let that one load, and we're going to have the same type of deal. OP's in a solid downtrend price is still holding the lows and uh, we're at 38.56 which is oversold we've been since the actual low which was a buy that was a 38.14 so it would have been definitely 38 uh before the you know during the day because we were much lower that day so gave a buy signal on the exact low and then uh we got one today testing those lows so I would think Neo's cheap here and well worth the risk reward. If you own it, maybe try to average in a little bit more. I'm just gonna throw up ZRX BTC, then I'm probably gonna call it an evening. There's ZRX BTC, waiting for it to load. You know, we really like this low here, keying off of that, and we came off a of buy signal three days ago at, uh, it's, Really, these prices are slightly lower. So I think ZRX still works higher. That chart looks good. I think what happened is the alts bled out there, you know, at the lows when Bitcoin held. And now they're just working higher off of these uh, sell volume that's been supported. So I think they're trying to work higher. And then Bitcoin, probably, you know, the big whales, composite operators are trying to talk everybody out of their last bit of Bitcoin. So... Uh, we might try to shake it, or maybe the low's already in, but I, I still think Bitcoin's gonna find its footing here too, soon and join the parade to the upside, so. There you go, and somebody said, Nick, did you hear about the Pearl hack? I did hear about it, I didn't really mention it on the show, I wasn't gonna talk about it, only because some people were talking about Oyster, we never put a buy on it, never talked about it, never recommended it, or never did a review on it, because I w really wasn't that impressed with the project. Some people are saying it was just a hack, and the, the smart contract got hacked, and they lost about 2-3% of their total supply. Others are saying it was an exit scam from their founder. So I'm sure the truth will come out in time, but as of now, the market is leaning more towards the more dramatic where there was an exit scam down 57% right now. 2 million market cap falling pretty. It was starting to round out, finding its base. Maybe it was going to be a, a little cup and handle, and nope, there was actually a hack down in the dirt. So we'll keep you up to date. You know, this could be a decent opportunity if you can weed through the fake news, real news, whatever it may be, and find out what's really going on with Pearl, whether it was simply a hack 
whether it was an exit scam, whatever it may be, you might have yourself here a high risk swing trade. I'm not really going to get involved at this time unless somebody can provide me some facts and insight. Uh, if this is something you guys really want me to talk about, I can go more in depth tomorrow. But as of now, if you hold Oyster, it might not even be worth dumping at this price because I think there will be some kind of bounce that you might be able to capitalize at some point. I know that sounds ridiculous if, if it's an exit scam, etc. Crypto is a weird place. There was a couple bounces on BitConnect, which obviously was an exit scam, was a, was a scam, a fraud, was proven. And that thing still isn't at zero. Coin market cap just removed it, though, so new people don't get involved with it. But that even saw a couple bounces. So I think Oyster might see that as well. And hopefully uh, none of you guys lost any major uh, sums of money with Oyster. And uh, we'll see what happens moving forward. Zcash looks good. Uh, what else? For new people, I still... Uh, the square came into our buy zone. The square off of trading our technometer has been absolutely perfect. Has caught in every move. So it gave a buy signal today's opening. So I would think square can work higher. Carrie's been working on her cookbook hard. So if anyone still has anything for the cookbook, lay it on us. We'll take buy the freaking dip, chip dip, or... Digibytes, blue cheese, blaster, fried blue cheese balls. Rib blaster. <laughs> <laughs> cheese balls. Digibytes, blue oh. cheese, breaded blue cheese, fried balls. Blue balls, okay. Yeah, blue balls. <laughs> you get enough of those anyways. What? Uh, that's What's our really thoughts on KMD? Got. What's You got a thought on KMD? I don't really have a thought on KMD. I know they just added two more projects to their protocol, which is obviously good. They need more of that. Uh, but no in-depth analysis right now or no real major news besides that, in my opinion. The software is, hold on now, we're getting burnt out or something. Developers must be in here too. Give me a second and I'll have a KMD. Got to reload. Oh, they're loaded finally. What the heck? Hold on a second. Bear with me. 7.37, it's getting late. Chris K9 says limp brisket may not be too good. <laughs> <laughs> K K M D B T C. Make a quick look. I haven't had this one brought up. Technometer is way oversold there. Went to overbought. I mean, it was came back to deeply oversold two days ago, but the OP really is moving in lockstep with price. So, not much to say there. And we had a sell here and a buy basically at the same price. So we're on a buy at the moment. Let's see if USD does anything different. Yeah, there's not much volume. I'm getting a few. Yeah, I'm getting some uh, errors on USD charts. So until they give me access to the software, I'm going to have a few errors once in a while. So can't do anything more on KMD. That's really about all we got. Do we have anything? I mean, we've been here for so long. I'm brain dead today. I had a lot of work to do in the traditional. Obviously, we were off here for like three or four days, so that makes it harder too, a little rusty. But hopefully, it was a decent episode for you guys. Hopefully, uh, Gamer Dude will be enjoying his bat tokens, and you guys will be enjoying your free Zen giveaway simply by hitting that like button. If you're not subscribed to the channel, well, that's just disrespectful, guys. Hit the subscribe <laughs> button and enter the giveaway by leaving a comment in the comment section below with your Zen horizon wallet address and that's it guys we just like giving back to you guys we have never been paid for a review an interview a show nothing anytime a coin has even given us any donations we've immediately given it back to you a lot of the coins we give away on the shows are either donations from coins and or i just happen to win bets and we give them away out of our own personal wallets obviously if we give away a free course that is out of our wallet as well so do not forget todd said if we get to six thousand subscribers that's just over 200 subscribers by the end of the week. He'll be giving away one of our cryptocurrency and Wyckoff trading courses, currently around $300, over 950 students. So make sure to do some sharing of videos because I want to see Todd give away something. You know, I'm always giving away some coins on my wallet here and there. Todd needs to give some away. So start sharing right. the videos on Twitter. Go to our YouTube homepage. Pick our favorite interview. Maybe it's the one with Kanan and Vertcoin. Share that on Twitter. Tag VTC. Tag Vertcoin. Let's get some more people over here at Learn Crypto. Get them subscribing. Let's break the 6,000 subscriber mark. The course oh. is 299 but I'm going to tell you that there's probably 
1100 $1,200 worth of value in that course if you want to compare it to the Wyckoff SMI Unleashed course, which was always around sixteen, seventeen hundred. I paid that in nineteen eighty two. So if you throw in a little inflation, the course is worth thousands. So that course of two nine nine is the best thing you're ever gonna do. And a no little, doubt. you know I like to have these little keep an eye on, you know, this little Bat. Nixtradamus going on. I think a project to keep an eye on is Icon, ICX. Oh. Some positive news coming out of a <laughs> blockchain event occurring in South Korea right now as we speak and will continue to be occurring. I'm going to be finding some articles, finding some information, and uh, we'll be presenting that information tomorrow during the live show at 6.30 p.m. Central Time about Icon and ICX. I think this is one to keep an eye on. I know this is one that you guys already have some bags of, but I think we might be seeing some nice price action here very shortly. That's By a Ripple. little teaser for tomorrow's show. By Ripple. What's up, Wog Australian? All right, guys, we're out of here. We got to get out of here. Seven four. That's it. So until next time, stay tuned for your daily updates on cryptocurrencies right here at Learn Crypto. Let's keep getting some more interviews, some reviews, some technical analysis. Let's keep having some fun. But the most fun we have here is when we're live with you guys. So thanks for tuning in. Thanks for being active in the comment box. And for those of you who are just stalking in the background, don't be afraid. Nobody bites over here. <laughs> Ask some questions. Give your opinions. Keep stacking those bags at these levels. Because the face melting bull run is coming very soon, my friends. And who knows? You'll maybe be that, asleep. Yeah, you'll be sleeping. You'll be sleeping. That bull run may not ever <laughs> stop as mass adoption and utilization of these cryptocurrencies and blockchain technology is only going to increase from these levels. So if you're trying to trade for $100, $200 moves in Bitcoin right now, you are simply an idiot. Peace out. I'll see you guys later. Later, tree man. That's it. <laughs> so unenthusiastic. Goodbye. <laughs> Peace. Peace. Buy yourself out. some Bitcoin. 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 I said Bitcoin. Bitcoin and Litecoin together. Bitcoin. Buy both of them. And just dollar cost average at, and accumulate at these levels, guys. Participate in staking, masternoding, mining, whatever it may be. I don't even care what your favorite coin is. I'm not here to preach and tell you what your favorite coin is. But I think you'll be happy buying around these levels. <laughs> and all the charts that we went over on the software <laughs> that we were given buys on, you probably should buy those too. And today the neighbors showed up with the managers of the building because they thought I lit the place on fire. <laughs> I fixed some brats and I burnt the shit out of them. <laughs> They weren't. And, there. And That's probably why I'm. While I'm like slurring over here, I like ate some infected brats. The they were dogs burnt are, to They didn't even taste good. I'm starving <laughs> right now. I need some sugar. It's the terrible. dogs are going crazy. I I opened the door. I smoked the whole hallway of the whole building. <laughs> I said, No, I just got some brats kicking. That's all. That's hilarious. All right. See you later. See you Peace guys out. later. Sorry for everybody who tuned in late. Make sure to watch the replay, and we'll be back here tomorrow. Peace. Oh, hey, hey, stay positive, pal. Most people, they lose, they whine and quit. But you got to be there for the turns. Everybody's got good luck, everybody's got bad luck. Don't run when you lose. Play hard, play clean, be careful out there. We'll see you all again. Sleep tight. <laughs>